I talked about the, these two guys here, Ben Davis, he's, he's more than a fitness coach, isn't he? Um, brilliant, he's the best trainer in the business. Um, the way he breaks everything down, so analytical, breaks it all down to the bare minimums, gets you doing the fundamentals that you can't get enough of, you know, um, even just dip down to basic technique, it could make sure you're doing it properly and correctly and punching with more power with less effort. Um, breaks every single little bit of the down uh, the opponent down um the way the fight down it's just his knowledge of the sport is just uh, unbelievable man and obviously come up with a great game plan with the help of Lee as well with the video analysis and looking at uh, looking at Ramirez and, and myself as well things that I can do better with my technique and watching and putting my back foot and all that sort of stuff it all just it all just clicked into place so it's just it was just I've got an amazing team around me. Best well, I want to get your team a shout. What's good, family? So, mash the like button and subscribe. So, we just heard there from Josh, Triple T, Taylor. Now, I'm doing this video. I wasn't going to do it, but I'm doing it mainly because, obviously, JT's half-gassed in this video, in my opinion, but also because in my fight reaction, people was hating. They stayed hating. But in reality, I know I'm right. So, we're going to go over it. There was a few points I missed still. So we hear there, Josh spends quite a lot of his post-fight reaction to giving props to Ben. But I hate to break it to people, yeah. Tonight, well last night, the undisputed championship goes to Shane McGuigan and Josh Taylor. Because all the elements of Ben Davidson, don't get me wrong, give Ben Davidson his props. Were there elements of Ben Davidson's game in Josh Taylor against Ramirez? Absolutely. However, they were all negative elements. Constant clinching. I mean, the referee nearly, nearly, the referee nearly got to the point of taking a point off. And UK fans were saying, oh, it's a robbery. Oh, no, it wasn't. Rightly so. JT was clinching way too much. Since when has JT been a one-shot and grab? When? He's never been like that. He's always been an inside-fighting demon. That's, what is, that's how he attracted me to him. I didn't fall in love with him pot-shotting and grabbing. Typical Ben Davidson, boring everyone to tears business. I'll tell you what else I didn't fall in love with. The last four rounds, dancing around the place, putting no work in. What's that about? Again, JT complaining, oh, the ref can take a point off. Oh, the last four rounds, the, uh, the scorecards had it 112, 114. Well, what do, you want, what do you want the referees to do? If you do nothing, we know, we know categorically in the championship rounds, people, referees and whatnot, or sorry, judges, put a lot of stake in them for whatever reason. You took them off, you didn't do anything. And I mean, it, it, it looks even worse because you had the man buzzed. Which, psychologically speaking, if you have someone buzzed and then you do nothing for the last few rounds, it, it makes the judges think, oh, he's run out of gas or whatever. Or, oh, the other guy's coming on strong. You didn't tame him. That, again, is Ben Davidson all over. Where do we draw the line here? It's really quite odd. Now, I'll give JT his credit. He won the belts, no doubt. But all the people gassing Ben Davidson up. Ben Davidson came in and has essentially spoiled something that was heading towards perfect. Spoiled it. Spoiled the broth. What Shane McGuigan and JT had was very special. Now people tell me, oh well, McGuigan's robbed people. No, Barry McGuigan robs people. We've seen Shane work with everyone. George Groves, pick someone. Everyone, George, or everyone Shane McGuigan's worked with, not one person's complained. I'm not talking about Cyclone promotions. People don't understand there's a difference, you know. Shane McGuigan is the training outfit. Not everyone, in fact, no one. Cyclone promotions don't even exist no more. So everyone Shane McGuigan works with is not promoted by Barry McGuigan. JT, in my opinion, should have left. It's not Shane's fault. His dad's a, a mup. He's running a broke promotion organisation. It's not his fault, really. And you've got to remember as well, people's dads are their dads. What's, what's Shane really going to do? So JT may feel like, oh, yo, Shane's taking his dad's side. Well, it's difficult. JT could have said, you know what, Shane, I'm sacking your dad off, but I'm going to stick with you. I don't know the, the, all the politics of it, but what I'm saying is, end of the day, JT and McGuigan were dangerous. R Ramirez would have been stopped. Instead, we saw a very lackluster performance. One of JT's worst, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong. People say, oh, why be you a hater? Shut up. JT, JT up until this point was my favourite fighter in terms of skills and ability and execution and heart and whatever else. Ticking all the boxes. Favourite fighter in the world up until Ben Davidson got hold of him. 
And now I'm seeing the, the I'm seeing the decline. And he he seems to like it though. I don't know what it is with fighters these days. They love they they enjoy they enjoy nicking fights. Josh Taylor nicked the fight. Rather than dominating it and mauling all over him and, and stopping out, fighters today seem to be really happy with not getting hit and just nicking a few, nicking a few, nicking it on points. I don't know what that is. Before, in the earlier days, people would revel on, or their whole their whole career and character was built on stopping someone. These days, it's like the Mayweather Mayweather Mayweatherification and the Klitschkoification of oh, I'm gonna nick it on points and then talk about Josh JT's too good for that, in my opinion. He's too good to be beating Ramirez on points. And it shows. Look at the two stop the two knockdowns. The two knockdowns came, they were just pot shots. Imagine if JT had been in there and put a few more combinations in there, which he's renowned for doing. But guess what? Ben Davison don't train for combinations. Ben Davison's known as the one one punch and grabber. Or lit little and off little and You know what I'm saying? Nipping and tucking and whatnot. Look at the Fury fight. People tell me, oh, Ben Davison's the best thing ever. If Ben Davison was the best thing ever, Fury wouldn't have been night and day when he left. When Ben Davison left Fury, Fury turned into a monster. I and mean, the great thing is about the Fury and Ben Davison thing is, we've got the same opponent to compare it against. Often, when people change trainers, they fight a different opponent, so you can't control the comparison. Fury fought Ben. Sorry, Fury fought Wilder under Ben and fought Wilder under someone else. And we see the difference there. And all of that is to do with a trainer. No doubt. Ben Davison has one size fits all. And his one size is run around scary. He don't know how to, to, to read the nuances and read his fighters. Josh Taylor, he's so much more developed than Fury as well. In his inside fighting ability, his technique. He's, he's just a pure all-round all fighter. I'd say what's lacking... When Josh Taylor peaked under, or where, where Josh Taylor was his best under Shane McGuigan, the only area lacking was his power. And that even, I think, shows now to some extent. I think he should work on digging a bit more. He's got speed, but we know that it's interesting. We saw um, Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez, training with Andy Ruiz on the pads. And Andy Ruiz is actually a similar fighter to Josh Taylor in as much as the speed of his shots. But... Alvarez said to Ruiz, Ruiz, s slow down. There's actually a trade-off between speed and power. When you try and go too quick, you can't dig, you can't turn it over. You have to get the balance right, or you have to better yet vary. You have to have a, a repertoire of shots. Yes, sometimes fast, but you also have to develop a dig. JT needed to develop the, the dig, especially if he's looking to go at weights. And even if he's not, even if, for example, he wants to fight Crawford at 140, he's going to need to have a dig in him. That can separate fights. Look at Alvarez again. Alvarez has been working on his dig for years, and it's finally starting to pay off. What that means is, is that now, Alvarez doesn't need to put a whole load of volume in. He only needs to hit you once, and people stay hit. But you have to develop that. You have to kind of pride yourself on that. But it's a skill in its own right. People say punches are born, to an extent, but not, well, not really, not these days. Not with the science we have. You have to, you have to condition your muscle, though, to, to dig. Now, Josh, Ta Josh Taylor and Ben Davison ain't got no hope of doing that. Because B Ben Davison, don't, you have to, to be a puncher, you have to set your feet. To be a puncher, you have to, you have to work on it. And there was nothing I saw about being a puncher in that fight. If there was, Ramirez would have been stopped. People telling me, oh, Ramirez is the best. Ramirez is average. Ramirez is, is massively overrated for a unified champion. I'm sorry, he's not. I told you man before, but the true unification, sorry, the true undisputed fight was against Progre. Progre would school, um, would school Ramirez, 100%, no doubt in that. So anyway, yes, oh, why be you hate JT? You don't know what you're talking about. JT's, up until Ben Davidson got in the way, was my favourite fighter. And I just think it's a shame that, I don't know, it just seems, <laughs> this whole points thing. You were good enough. I don't mind you. If sometimes a fighter is only good enough to win on points. But when someone like JT, who clearly, he put him down twice with two light shots. Which proves that if JT had wanted it, as he talked about before the fight. If he'd have wanted to, Ramirez was there for the taking. In terms of legacy, yeah. A lot of, in my opinion, a lot of legacies. Or what differentiates the greatest of all time versus greats. Or what, you know what I mean? What differentiates that, that bit is... Not only how you beat opponents, but how you dominate them. 
the Mayweather era, because Mayweather never stopped no one, he kind of changed the airwaves. He made people believe that, oh, it's not, it doesn't matter how you win, as long as you win. That's wrong. The whole Klitschko thing, oh, it doesn't matter how you win, it's, it's as long as you win. Just win by any means. And by winning on points is the same as winning by KO. It's not, I'm afraid to say. Your resume and your legacy, it becomes exponentially more valuable if, you've come, if you come up against your peers and stop them. Or even better yet, try to stop them when it's clearly you're better than them. I'm afraid to say Josh Taylor was clearly better than Ramirez. Clearly, in my opinion. It was night and day. He just didn't want to put himself out there. And I think that's, that's been all over because I've seen McGuigan. I've seen McGuigan working with Lawrence Okoli, who is, who is a much less developed fighter at the point. And in the seventh round, he, Okoli told him, get, knock him out. And he did it. So I know McGuigan can read them things. McGuigan knows how good or good not his fighter is and knows when, when to put the foot down. He, he would have told Josh Taylor, put the foot down now. Get this guy out of there. McGuigan is a true... What's the word? McGuigan is a true... He, he's locked into the game. I can see... But I can see... He's going to do great. He's going to be a Hall of Fame trainer. For sure. Ben Davison and the fin fingers as well. They're similar ages. Ben Davison, he doesn't have that quality. Ben, someone pointed out, they said, oh, Ben Davison's always scared of, of his getting his fighters whatever. And that's the thing, you can't have that. The, again, look at the first Fury fight against Wilder. Freddie Roach, Hall of Fame trainer, was saying, put the foot down, put your foot down. Ben was sitting there shitting himself. Not wanting to put, you know what I mean? Not wanting to stick, him, stick himself out there. Unfortunately, that's how you get knocked out. That's how you lose. And look at this result tonight. Yes, Josh, Josh Taylor won, and rightfully so, but... For a man to have two knockdowns and win by 114, 112, yes, people can blame the judges, but rather than do that, blame the performance, blame the, the trainer. JT was having to go at the judges. No, it wasn't the judges' fault. You was clinging on every two seconds, clinching. You wasn't active for the last three rounds. How can you win a fight by more than 112, 114 if you, if you, wait, if you just throw the last three rounds away? How, how, I don't get that. Any fighter who throws the last three rounds away... You shouldn't be shocked if anything happens. I don't care how many knockdowns you think you've had. If you throw, just give away the last three, for what? What is that? Just box easy. What for? It's a weird mentality. I'm sorry, it is. But Josh Taylor seems to think the sun shines out of, his, out of Ben Davison's backside. I, 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 I don't see it myself. Because someone as good as JT, yeah, and with his mentality, JT's a true warrior. He's got the true mindset, the true bare-knuckle mindset, yeah? For someone with, with all these abilities... And you're, you're coasting him to, dis, to decision victories. I just think there's so much more there. Fair enough. If you've got someone, yeah, who's long and useless and whatever, fair enough. But when you've got, a, when you've got an animal, a complete animal, who only really needs to add one punch power to his repertoire, he's almost complete. And you got him, and you got him as a complete package, and then you're devolving him. You're turning him into a one one punch and grab fighter. Now that's all well and good as well. What you don't realise is, by devolving him into that way, what happens when you come up against someone like Crawford, like Errol Spence? Is that going to be enough now? And that's what Fury found out. When you come up against the top level guys, like Wilder or whoever, that whole thing of nipping and tucking, it don't work out. Yes, you can get away with it against Ramirez. Idiots think Ramirez is really good. He's not really good. Ramirez is worse than Progray. But I'm lying. Don't don't delude yourself. Just because JT beat him, don't try and make out Ramirez is really good. Ramirez is basic, straight up and down kind of fighter. Nothing special. Tell me one thing Ramirez does really special. Exactly. Nothing. So just stop, stop gassing the place up. Ramirez is a standard fighter who got lucky in a weak division. When, when, when and if JT comes up against Crawford, and before, under McGuigan, yeah, I'd love that fight. Now, would I be 100% certain? No, but I'd love to see that fight with JT under McGuigan with Crawford. Now, with Ben, ugh, running around the place and one, throwing one shot at a time, how's he going to win that fight? It's going to be a lot harder, that's for sure. Because I can see, a, I can see, we've seen Crawford put down before. We've seen Crawford sparked by bumps. If JT goes in there with Crawford and roughs him up, I can see JT knocking him out. But he's got to have that Scottish... TTT attitude. If you go in there and you're looking to jab and throw one punch at a time, Crawford can do that all day. If you go in there with your elbows tucked in and start weighing all over him, and you might know that the main thing that I rated Josh Taylor on was 
his ability to, to mix it up on the inside. Josh Taylor has a well, had a throwback 80s, 90s inside fighting attitude, but with but 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 with added technique. In the 80s and 90s, they had the attitude, but the technique wasn't there. JT's got a 2021 technique base combined with the attitude. That's where he differentiates himself. He can walk people down who get sh who get shock. Crawford, Crawford, Crawford would be completely shocked getting opened up. But instead, we ain't going to see that. We're going to see some goofy thing. Where it's a, I don't know what it will be, but it will be goofy either way. This is just my opinion. If I'm wrong, listen, if Ben Davison goes in there and does something magical, and fair play to him. I put my hands in there, I was wrong. But I just think it's a, it's a travesty, yeah, that JT didn't stop Ramirez last night. That's what I'm saying. He's, he was, and people, oh, you hate him. What are you talking about? I'm saying he's, you man, this is the problem. Same with AJ fans, to be fair. Oh, YB, uh, you, you guys just think everything they do is perfect. No. And also, you man don't really understand how good they are. Because by saying, oh, that was the best performance ever, you're basically saying, well, yeah, you're saying he couldn't do any better. But I'm telling you, JT's ability was much better than going 50-50 with, or going 12 rounds with Ramirez. You put him down twice. By by the seventh, you put him down twice. How does that fight go 12 rounds? Explain me that, please. If in six and seven you put him down twice, how does it go more than 10 rounds? Never mind the last three rounds you're just taking off just to get the win. He was food. And a good trainer, a great trainer would, would know that and would pounce on it and tell you, don't come back until he's finished. Because he wasn't good enough to do nothing to you. The shots, was, the shots weren't doing nothing on you. It was your right, it was your duty to knock that guy out. He weren't good enough to lace your boots up. Never mind go 12 rounds. So we'll see anyway how it goes from here. If I'm wrong, I'll own it. Just my opinion.